Um, I've put the armature in, into the motor casing with the new bearing, and I've also put the field curls in, but they're not fixed, but I poked the wires through there. It was a bit of a fiddle, so I didn't bother filming that bit. Um, what it does show is the importance of marking, like I showed you earlier, how to put a line on to mark the position of the field coils and the end cap. Simple reason being that these field coils can be rotated to any position. They're not locked in. They have got a little indentation there which shows where the bolts go through, but you can still put them in a different position. The problem with that is that if you move these round and they're in the wrong position, you will get more sparking on the armature, what, the, what is known as armature reaction. So, and, and one way of reducing armature reaction is to either retard or forward the coils. So generally you want to put them in the place they came out from originally. And if you've marked it, that's easy to do. Um, I'm now going to put the end cap on. I've smeared the tiniest bit of grease on there. You're not supposed to grease phosphor bronze bearings but it's an old machine anyway and I've just put the tiniest tiniest bit you can't even see it and I'm going to hopefully put the end cap on. Make sure you've got these holes lined up there and make sure the field coils are still in the right position so we don't want to uh, have a lot of sparking. Anyway I've got that in and then you've got to put the bolts through there and there's two ways the, the bolts can go in. They can go in that way or that way and in this case it's that way because you've got to put a little nut on the end and there's a square section there which holds the nut in place so we've got to do it that way if I can get the bolt through let's go in then you've got a little nut there and I'll pop that in like that oh, spawned in the motor isn't that typical would you credit it if it can go anywhere it'll go in that's Murphy's law that is It'll go to the most awkward place possible for you to find it again. Anyway, I've got it back out now. I'm just holding the nut with a screwdriver while I do it up. Don't do it one up tightly first. Do the other one first. And get that one assembled. And do them up gradually a bit at a time. There's the other nut. Pop that in there. Oh, I do hope this isn't too boring. It's been going on a bit. Well, the dog's barking now, so something's going on. There we go. Now just do a bit up at a time, like that. Don't do it all one side at once. It's much better to do a bit here and a bit there. Hopefully, should. That's that one. And that's that one. Now, that should be, there we are, let's turn. It doesn't feel that smooth, to be honest, but it is a new bearing. And it's been in my shed for years, a bit dry, so I put some grease so it might bed in. It doesn't matter if it's noisy, it's only for workshop use anyway. So that's the actual motor part done. I've got the carbon brushes to fit in, but that's fairly straightforward, I hope, so I won't film that. And then it's a question of assembling the end cap. So what I'm going to do is put the carbon brushes, uh, the carbon brush holders and the brushes in, and then come back for the end caps. The brushes can be a bit fiddly to get in, especially these with a, a spring with a wire in. But what you want to do is push the brush in and then push the spring down with, with your one hand and hold it in with the other like that. And then, of course, if you let go, it'll spring out. So get a little screwdriver or something. Press it down in with a little screwdriver and then poke the little tab in like that to lock it in place. And then just make sure that little tab on the tab is pressed up to stop it coming out again. And that should be it. That's the carbon brushes now fitted in place, hopefully. Uh, motor parts assembled now, but what I thought I'd do, before I put the fans on, say wasting a lot of valuable time if it doesn't work, I'm going to connect the motor up first and see if I can get it to run um, before I bother putting it down. Because it, it might not work and I don't want to waste time on that, so I'm just going to connect it up without the fans on and let it run, see if it works alright. It might be very noisy. I'm going to hold it firm so I don't want it to fly off the bench. And when I press the lid down on my connecting box, it, the motor should run. But it'd probably be noisy. Well, actually, it's not too bad and, and well worth doing. That's that bit. Now we've got to put the fans on, noting the order in which they came off. I'll move the camera out a little bit so you can see better. You've got your little little bush there goes on first, and then the washer, 
and the fan. It's a good idea with fans um, just to hold the fan like that and give them a tap. And sometimes, it's not too bad in this case, you can see little bits of dirt flying out. The actual, that's quite a bit actually. You just tap them carefully. Inside the fan round here, you do get a lot of dirt gets caught up in there. And it's a fiddle cleaning it, but if you just tap them like this, most of it will come out. Point is, if you leave it in, it can sometimes upset the balance of the fans so they don't work properly. Well, they'll work, but they'll be noisy. So that's that one. Pop that under, make sure it's the right way round. Um, then you've got another washer that goes on the fan itself, and then a spacer, a large spacer. Then we've got the intermediate baffle that goes between the fans. That has to go in there. Just pushes in this a bit. I think it must go that way. Actually, I don't think it matters which where it goes, but I'm going to give it a little tap with a hammer to make sure it fits in the ring. That's it. Then we've got another washer. Goes on there. Then the other fan. We'll give that a tap. There's dirt in there. It's always best to do this. You see all that dirt's been hiding in there. It, can't, it doesn't look dirty, but. Sometimes they get really chock a block, and uh, it can make the thing quite noisy. Anyway, that's that. Pop that on there. Oh, I do hope this is going to work. I think that back will just happen in a bit more. That's better. I think probably when the end plate's on, it'll do the job better. Washer. And then finally the, the little nut, which is a left-hand thread, I think. Yeah. There we go. 11 mil spanner, that's 10, that's 11. Tighten that up. That has to be too tight. Then we've got the final end cap which pushes over the whole lot. Um, I have to watch I don't dent it. I'll get the mallet on that, I think. Here we go. Oh. It's a bit of a bodge. I mean, the old original Hoover motors were all bolted together, so it was much easier. Well that's it, the motor is now fully assembled and working. It was a bit noisy at first, it was rubbing, and I took the end cap off and just tapped the fan chamber down a bit. I think, not the fan chamber, the baffle, the internal baffle was sticking up a bit, whether it got bent I don't know, but it seems alright now. So the next job is to get it back into the machine and uh, hopefully it'll work. I'm not going to film myself doing that because it's, it's a bit boring, it's fairly straightforward anyway, it's a fiddly job to do. Uh, because, especially because it's not the correct motor, so I'm going to have to bodge it if you like. Um, but once it's uh, finished, I'll uh, come back and we can see if it works alright and you'll see what it's like. Uh, just a quick word about the non-standard motor. This is the Electrolux original uh, rubber ring that seats the motor in the machine. You've got to have that in. And obviously this is, is too... Uh, it's the wrong shape and everything for it. So what I did, I found another off another old motor and I found that that seemed to fit perfectly around there and then if I put that inside there it packed it out enough to keep it tight in the machine. For the top piece and the only way I could get that to fit was I found this which is actually out of a it's a, a seal ring off a hot point washing machine uh, went round the bearing and seal and uh, for some reason I kept being a scrimper as usual I keep all these things I got a box in the shed marked seals and stuff and I had a look and I found that and it for some reason it fits perfectly on top of that motor I mean you think it was made for the job it isn't as I say it's a washing machine but it'll fit the job perfectly so hopefully I should be able to get back in now well there we are folks almost finished one hoot Electrolux model 302 that wasn't working is now back together let's switch on and see what happens Perfect job. All that just because that ball bearing. Now that machine would have been scrapped. Anybody would tell you to scrap that. Just because of one simple ball bearing from a scrap box. So total cost of repair, nothing, zero. Uh, a little bit of my time. I started about uh, two o'clock and it's three o'clock now. And that included some time fiddling around, but otherwise we've got a 
vacuum cleaner back in use and it's a nice one because it's got the cloth bag in it which means I don't have to keep putting paper bags it's ideal for the workshop even Paddy my German Shepherd dog thinks I've done a good job what do you think then Paddy? he doesn't like vacuum cleaners as a rule he barks when you turn it on <laughs> Paddy thinks it's alright folks. Bye!